Good afternoon everybody, how are you today? This uh, Wednesday the 3rd of February. Hope you're doing alright. Hope you've had a good week so far. Good afternoon Janet. I see there's 11 of you. Hello Rob. Hello Liz. Hi Rosemary. Hello Norman. I'm all right, thank you, Rob. I think. <clears throat> Hectic morning. We've, um, because Shop Appy's had a massive overhaul. Uh, afternoon, Anne. Um, massive overhaul with the big, hello, Christine. How are you? Um, with the big uh, Vega, Vega. Hello, Sue. Visa investment and their website. I've got to say, I've just been scrolling through it. Um, and it's so, on my phone, it's so whizzy and user-friendly. I love it. Um, so the, my point of saying that was, obviously, it, it, the whole revamp happened between Sunday afternoon and Monday afternoon. So all of the orders that came in over the weekend, I couldn't, um, couldn't do on Monday. So this morning, I've spent three or four hours... Um, yeah, you can do without your gel pen, I think, today. You should be able to. If you've got an embosser, you'll be all right. Um, so, yeah, I spent a few hours uh, at the shop with Jackie this morning printing off reams of paperwork with uh, with orders, which is good. Good. I'm here with a black tea today. I don't know why I'm having black tea. I just couldn't be bothered to put any milk in it. I will be on Discord, for those of you on Discord. Um, but I forgot to charge the phone this morning. I put it by the charger, but didn't actually plug it in. Um, so it's only on like 3% battery. So I'm, I'm waiting for it to boost up a little bit so I can at least spend some time with you on Discord this morning. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. I, I really thought I was ahead of the game. Oh, I look at me putting it by, you know, doing the get it ready for charging, then not charging. 
It does look good, doesn't it, Liz? I've just um, been having a browse. What I like is I, I, I like being able to shop in all the other towns as well that are on it. So if there's something in Wellington that I like the look of or something in, um, I don't know, something up Yorkshire or, you know, there's so many shops now. I think there's 100, 100, 100 towns or more that are on Shop Happy. And it's all independent, so there's loads of stuff. Hello, Anne. How are you? Um, yeah, so there's loads of sh stuff from all the independent businesses. Some of them are quite quirky, which is really good. So it's almost like a, an independent shop version of Etsy. Hello, Judy. So we're doing a hair today, aren't we? Hair today. Gone tomorrow. I did this as a class. Um, oh, thank you, Sandra. They did a wonderful job, didn't they? I, I, I was inspired to... Um, thank you, Christine. I was inspired to do that on Monday night because Thursday afternoon we did a portrait class of Mel Gibson. And I was going to do the same one again, obviously, for the Monday evening, which is how it works. The Thursday afternoon watercolour um, then has the same subject as the Monday evening watercolour the following week. But when I heard that um, Captain Tom was really poorly, I thought, you know what, I think it'd be really nice. Um, it fills the objectives of what the portrait painting class was about anyway. But I thought it'd be really nice. Little did I know how, how poorly he actually was. Um, that he passed away the, the following day, um, which is really sad. I think um, our PM wants a six o'clock round of applause, doesn't he? Public round of applause to honour um, Captain Tom, or Sir, Captain Sir Tom, and um, all of the NHS workers. 30, what was it, 39 million he raised for the NHS over last year, age 99? Amazing, absolutely amazing, and he really was a, a a beacon of light and hope in a in a world of of uncertainty and and all of that kind and an upset, wasn't he? He sort of like brought the nation together, which I think is very important. Right, I've got my little stumpy two B pencil, my HB. Hello, Norma. How are you? Oh, I'll show you. I'll, while, while I'm waiting for everyone to join, 17 of you, you, you all sneak in very quietly, don't you? Um, I'll show you what the acrylic class was last night. Because it's a snow-filled woodland. But when I did the drawing class, I said, because on, obviously on Tuesday nights, we do a drawing one week, and then we do the same subject in acrylics the week after. And when I was doing the drawing of this snow-filled woodland, I said, oh, you know what? When Because it's all oranges in the sky in, in one little bit, and it's all going to be sort of like purples and greys, I'd love to have a little fox in. So I edited the photograph to add a little fox being caught by the evening sun. So that's what we did last night. Oh, I've got the hiccups now. That's what we did last night. I enjoyed doing that. You know what I'm like? If I've got a sun or a moon, there's usually I want to stick a hare in it or um, a fox or a badger or some woodland animal. Hello, Heather. Right, let me see if I can get enough juice on Discord so I can chat to whoever's on that. Ooh, I've got 31%. <laughs> Is it going to be enough for me to last the lesson on Discord? Well, we'll find out. Oh, thank you, Heather. The, uh, the fox was optional. No Norman in that one, I know. We have got a Norman in the, in the lesson. But you mean Gnorman the Gnome. He's got a little website page ready now because I'm looking at getting some more merchandise for him um some little notepads and things i've already got a badge and a little 
mini magazine for, of mindfulness. Um, so it's 12 illustrated pages of Norman and friends who were uh, just talking about different ways you can be mindful. Um, it's only it's only a little tiny little booklet, um, and I think it's on offer for three pound fifty with with the badge, and um, and the little book or a zine. It's called Zine, like a magazine but smaller. A zine. Good afternoon, Rosemary and Chris and Anne. I have twenty eight percent, so I don't know how long I'll be with you, but. Um, <laughs> I had it plugged in. I have no plugs or charges long enough for where I sit to do my classes. So um, so it may not last the full lesson, but we'll see. Yeah, for the coffee break or something, yes. But I hope, hope you're doing all right. We will need an embossing tool. Hello, D. How are you? I hope you're all right. Oh, I want to try something as well that I saw because... Because I'm on TikTok for the young people, um, I learn I learn so much stuff on there. It, it's an amazing thing I've learned DIY. There's loads of us old people on there as well, and even older. Um, we're taking over really, and um, I'm learning DIY. I'm learning computer tips. I'm learning art tips. I'm, you know, a lot of it's just like silly videos. But uh, in in them, I've got I follow Potters. I follow all sorts of things. Um, there was this one potter in America who was a, a gifted about a hundred moulds for the pottery studio and she hadn't got a clue what was in them. So every week she opens a new box and, and casts the mould with the pots and, and, you know, they're actually gnomes, believe it or not. And um, it's like a different type of gnome every week that she makes and she hasn't got a clue what they are and then she casts them and then glazes them and does all of that. It's it's, it's fascinating but what i've seen is um i watched somebody use a graphite stick with a paintbrush and that was quite interesting so i might try that with a um with a brush i don't use very often maybe the little fan brush that's in my acrylic set anyway that's that's by the by we'll see how we go and what they did is they scribbled the um in, uh, graphite stick on some paper and then they use the brush on the paper to lift off the graphite and then move it over um i've seen it done with graphite powder as well so who knows who knows so let's let's sketch out so while i've still got gosh i've got 80 16 battery at the minute it's going super fast um so i'll we'll sketch out where his head is so it's about four fingers in on the left four fingers in um his chin is four fingers up oh my god it would help if i could count my fingers wouldn't it i've only done three fingers there so four so the bottom of his chin is four fingers up his side of his face that the indented side up to his sort of like his nose bit is is four fingers in Oh, actually, do you know what? His whole head is four fingers, four fingers, four fingers. <clears throat> so we've got four fingers in from the left, four fingers in from the right, and four fingers up. And, no, we're not that lucky. His head is, um, from his bottom jaw, four fingers gives us his eyebrow line. And almost all of his eye. But we'll work on his eye. Because his eye. Eye eye. He's only got the one. His eye is about three fingers in. And the width of my thumb. He's got big eyes haven't they hairs. Big legs as well. Bit of big everything. Big ears. And then 
about a thumb width for the top of his head actually so yeah it's got a bit of a slope so I'll go through all of these measurements again to save anyone panicking so his bottom of his chin is four fingers up the side of his face is four fingers in both sides his eye starts three fingers in from the left and it's a thumb width and then the top of his head is a thumb width above his eye-ish. Depends how big your thumb is, I suppose, isn't it? Hey, Rosemary, how um, how spooky that we chose to do Captain Tom on Monday night. Mm. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, it, it felt it. And I think the mood of the class was very appropriate as well on, on Monday. So, yeah. Yes, exactly. I think Mel Gibson would have felt a bit weird. <laughs> Hello, Diana. I just nearly spat my tea out then, Rosemary, when you said that. We'd have had it would it would have been hair coloured. It's black tea, so it would have worked quite fine to the colour of the for the hair. Right. So um, his bottom jaw is about a little finger. His bottom jaw is a, is about a little finger width up. Then is what what are those called? Have we got any animal? animal but Janet you're quite an animally person what are the the I don't even know what to call them the bits that like the roundy bits on his top lip that segment that we'd have as our upper lip I suppose is it their upper lip I ain't got a clue I want them to have a little name like lip mound or something like that I don't know So that's about a finger and then his nose is going to be a little finger in it but I don't know if I've got this I think I need to move it ah right okay I need to move mine slightly over I've got it too central because because I'm talking um, it's still all going to be in the same proportions but how long is that so that left hand face lip mound is a little finger wide shapes is good Sometimes I've seen people, and especially um, left-handed people, um, draw more complicated objects upside down. So their reference image is upside down. Um, and that uh, that tends to break down the fact, like you were saying, it's not... Um, it, it no longer becomes the uh, the object. It just becomes something else, I suppose. It just becomes random, random shapes. That is looking a little bit weird at the minute. No. Maybe it's a it's a maybe it's more of a left brainy thing than a right brainy thing looking at art in shape form. No, mine looks a little bit like an alien, which is quite cool. I'm going to firm up some of the lines. Now, we all know Liz Riley is going to say her hair looks like Winston Churchill. Because all, all of her animals look like Churchill, according to Liz. But I don't think that's true. And yeah, Rosemary often sticks dinosaurs in all of her work. <laughs> 
spot the triter triceratops or the, the pterodactyl. Yeah, excellent. He's going to look weird because he's got no ears. That's just a straight line down and then his back is a little bit humped. This is taken from a much bigger... His cigar's coming a long way. <laughs> Mrs. Riley. Oh, gosh, his ears. Are, I'm going to have to do his measurement of his ears from the top down because my fingers aren't big enough to measure his ears. <laughs> so, left ear is two fingers from the top. Let me bring my page down just a fraction. Um, is it two fingers? It's around about two fingers. They're massive ears. Um, so, two fingers for, for the left ear on, well, our left, and a thumb for the ear on the right. And I'll, I'll get the measurements in properly in a second. Oh, look at that. They fit just nicely on my page. Well, we can't see his legs. I've deliberately... Ch I, uh, tomorrow morning is the, the art for the anxious. And um, that one is... Um, what is that? It's boxing hairs in pencil tomorrow morning. Uh, but they are slightly further away. So if you fancy doing, if, if you're in a hair mood, uh, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, we're doing boxing hairs in pencil. Because uh, the Thursday morning art for the anxious, well, I'll just wait for you all to sort of not catch up because it makes me feel like, it, I don't want to make you feel like you're lagging behind and there's a competition. Because um, we all know Chris will win anyway. Um, that uh, <laughs> um, the, the Thursday morning art for the anxious, I've tweaked how the lessons run. So the first Thursday of every month is drawing, the second Thursday of every month is watercolour, the third Thursday of every month is acrylics, and the fourth Thursday in a month is either gouache or charcoal or pastel or pen or oil or something like that. So it just helps. If, the, you, if you wanted to do an extra watercolour in a month, you could do the, the second Thursday morning, or the, if you wanted to do extra drawing, you could do the first Thursday morning, that kind of thing. So I thought, I thought it was quite... Uh, quite useful right now his ear on the left is about two fingers in towards the top and it starts a thumb width in on his head here and, that, and it's about a thumb width in I, I find it once, once I've sketched it all out and made all my mistakes then I can feel a little bit happier about um, about doing a little bit more detail on it you know well mine's going to end up looking like the Cadbury's bunny Cadbury's Cadbury's caramel no his ears are weird and like Dee's just said they're very tatty aren't they maybe he's been caught by foxes and stuff do you think About a finger width apart, thumb width again, and that ear becomes part of his head. Three fingers in. Ooh. <clears throat> See, if this was a watercolour class, we'd just trace it, wouldn't we? And we wouldn't tell anyone that. <laughs> That's much easier. <laughs> Oh, I never tell. Well, I think it's important when, when you're doing... That ear's a bit wonky. What have I done wrong with that one? Have I made it too... How wide is that ear? Just over two fingers. Yeah, I need to slim it down a fraction, I think. I mean, they're big enough. I don't want to make them, like, really wide as well. Dumbo. Who mind does? Well, yours does. 
that's about how wide is that at this wide this point just over two fingers and a pencil we know that's about right that's about right gosh I've been and seen almost everything till I see a little hair fly Well, actually, that does make it look like a hair now. I'm, I don't think it would escape a fox. <laughs> but but at least it's a hair. I need to fatten that up a little bit there. Get his cheek in. Yeah. Well, this is all the sketchy bit, isn't it? This is This is the sketchiness of it. That we can then, um, that's what rubbers are for. I, you know, when I used to teach in primary education, I used to ban erasers in art. It's like, no, learn how. I, I mean, uh, to be fair, I think having an eraser is a stretched hair. Squish it. Um, well, do you know, I, I, and I, and I've, I've, ch I've chatted to a few students and um, I had a few students who went on a painting holiday somewhere and every day the tutor there made them work only in permanent pen for sketching when they were out and about. And, uh, and they said um, how terrifying it was for the first two or three days but then, actually, what it made them do is they were far more confident in their brush strokes, well, in their pen, in their pen work. Um, because I think sometimes having an eraser to hand, it's like that crutch, isn't it, that you know you'll be able to make a mistake. So you're not really that careful or that bothered. And I know I'm exactly like that. My, my lines are all over the place when I sketch and I've got an eraser to hand. Um, and I, I, I think that's really interesting. And it's, um, I mean, I do I do like an eraser. And I use it just, I use it for more than just um, erasing mistakes. Uh, you know, I think, I think it's a really useful tool, full stop. But it was interesting to hear their reason as to why um, the tutor said no erasers and you could see actually they brought their sketchbooks in and uh you could see the very tentative oh oh dear you know with their lines up because it was on a coastal area so they were they were sketching all of the scenes along the beach and the boats but then almost like midweek definite lines didn't really matter bit of loose scribble for texture it was beautiful work I mean, and, and these were ladies that had been painting for a very, very long time. Um, but yes, well, I think with watercolours, what can happen is if you use a putty rubber too much, because it's like it's putty, isn't it? I think it can leave a bit of a film on the page and it can do all that kind of thing. Um, so from his point of view, from David Bellamy's point of view, I can totally see you don't want to erase too much which is why he does very delicate soft lines doesn't he and all of that kind of stuff yes but he has spent his whole career i mean when you think of david bellamy you just think of uh, we're talking about not the woman you know around on the undergrowth david bellamy we're talking about the the david bellamy watercolorist but when you think when i think of david bellamy i think of watercolor mountains and beautiful glowing skies with either yellow ochre or naples yellow kind of sunlight coming through um, and that always makes me think of david bellamy um uh so you know with with his whole career it's the same as Hazel Soane, I think, of really loose figures. Um, because she does a lot of that. Yeah. Mind you, it's it's funny, I've um I've I'm I'm doing a I've created a February art challenge, a whole month long with prompts for artists to, to use because it's often a month where we don't know what to post and it makes you and I've created it to make it think about your own work and your own process. And I was pre planning 
the rest of the weeks. And I was talking about the orangutan painting that I did and the amount of purple I had to use to paint those orangutans. It was it's, it's shocking. I wouldn't have thought I needed purple, but the only way I could get the colour right was by adding dioxazine purple. It's um, I think it's fascinating. I watch um, on TikTok, there's an artist and um, what he does is everybody challenges him. He's got he uses the oils and he's got the messiest palette. It would give some of you lot nightmares. He's got the messiest palette that's sort of like the size of a table with a tile in the middle, a big a big space in the middle, sort of like the size of my drawing board here, A3 size. And um, he's got all of his oils out. He's got every colour there, like greens and oranges and reds and blues. So he doesn't just work on an eight colour palette. But people will challenge him to, to match the colour up of an object. So he puts the object in the middle and he gets this little scrap piece of card. And then he gets his palette knife and mixes the colour up on the palette. And then um, adds a bit more of this colour. Then he gets a random colour, mixes a bit more. A random colour, mixes a bit more. Tests a bit on the corner of the card. Holds it up in front of the object. Not quite right. Adds a bit of white. Adds a bit of this. Adds a bit of that. And then he matches the colours up. Literally, everything that they challenge him with, he can match up um, with the, the wide range of colours. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm, supp I'm supposed to know about colour. So I could try that myself and see if I could um, match random things up. Um, just using my eight colours because I mean he's using greens and all the other stuff so um, yeah I think that'd be quite interesting I've got too much of a, a an angle here where his neck meets his body on the right hand side I need to sort of that's better Barry that's better right I'm going to work on his eye next <laughs> really Chris what a shock you see well generally and I think we did with Captain Tom didn't we on Monday we, we sketched it all out then we went straight for the eyes and teeth um, and we did on Thursday with Mel Gibson because once I've got the vague outline if I can get the eye how I want it I feel far more confident in going on. I, I'd, especially with a person, I'd hate to spend ages getting the skin tones and a really wonderful portrait of an animal or a person, and then get the eyes wrong. You know that would I would I'd be really upset. So I can let me let me zoom in on his eye a little bit. Mouth or your mouth. It goes in a bit, doesn't it? Uh, oh, yes, you did say your head was a little bit. I mean, what we might be all right. Let's um, move on to his, his eye, Rosemary, and see. Um, put it on the screen later and we'll have a look. Right, so this is like a 5B I'm using. So there's more pupil, um, there's more iris on the on the light, uh, the left hand side, slightly less on the right hand side, and there's a slight grey area. So I'm gonna where the light's reflecting off his eye. So that, like that. It looks like he's got little eyelashes. We did a lovely lesson, Janet, didn't we? I don't know if you remember. We did, um, was it a drawing class, Janet, or a, a Thursday morning art for the actor where we did lots of animal eyes? Were any of you on that class? We did like a tiger's eyes and um, cat's eyes. Uh, we did one lesson where we did different ages of human eyes, but... Um, with with we did an animal eye um lesson a oh got to be a couple of years ago so for the uh, i'm leaving that white area for now even though it's not pure white in the photograph 
and I might even go like 8 or 9B for for this depends to get the uh, the iris right I just want to go a little bit heavier with the pencil not too heavy on the very outside and then a little bit lighter as it gets towards the pupil Oh, we, we, they may be getting some quotes to fix the shop roof. Oh, it's, it's awful. I couldn't open at the moment, even if I wanted to. Oh, there's problems every night. I've got I've, behind my counter. I've got a massive um, bucket from B and Q. You know, they're bright orange buckets. And every every two days I go in, I have to empty that out because it's just pouring down through the roof and the walls and everything. But fingers crossed, whether it'll get fixed before we are allowed to reopen. Um, who knows when that will be anyway? Um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully I been able to um, have my shop back and then I won't have to start thinking about having to look elsewhere and spending even more money that I ain't got it was a drawing class it was a while ago though wasn't it Sue yes elephant's eye yes that's it we did elephant's eye a dog's eyes didn't we tiger's eyes um and something else I can't remember. But yeah, it was a lovely class. Um, I think it must have been before you joined Rosemary. So that's uh, about a year and a half, two years. Yes, yes, because you just did watercolours and then you've done, then you switched to do watercolours and drawing. That's right. It's amazing, isn't it, how time flies. Because Anne and Chris, you've got to have been coming since 2013. Yeah. Because I, I was, it was while I was at, you see, I, I had my church lane shop 2010 to 2011, and then... I moved to White Lion Walk where we were shut on Mondays, which is when Bernice um, said that she wanted to set up a Monday morning class um, and I wasn't open on a Monday. So it was around about 2013, I think, by the time Great Borton set up. Yes, 5B pencil I'm using, see. It'd been running a couple of months before you joined, hadn't it? I think so. I think we started it in the... We did... Um, a, a, for Great Borton, we did a tester over the summer holidays, sort of like August, July, August time. And then we properly did it September, October, I think. Because you started the same time as Pauline, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. I don't think I'm going to do any more to that. I don't know whether I'm going to use my smudgy stick to soften it. Let me see. Will that make a difference? Oh, maybe it makes it a little bit more glassy. Maybe I'm going to go 9B for the, for the pupil. You know I like a nice... Oh, I've just slipped with it. Ah... He's got like, hello, what? <laughs> Poor. To be honest, I've just I've just dabbed off with a putty eraser, and actually, it gives it a little bit more of a glassy. So, how long have you been coming then, um, Sue Cross?
Just a little bit of glassy dabbing just in the bottom area. Happily, it was where I um, had slipped. Um, interestingly, there's a, the Banbury Guardian seems to be all over the place with their articles at the moment. They're churning out news that's like months and years old. I think it must be really quiet. Um, they're like saying it's almost like breaking news. Um, they're saying in Oxford that a lot of their empty shops is going to be filled with pop-up shops. Well, that's been happening for years because I know the guy that's in charge of it all. Um, you know, it's the same as Banbury. We've had loads of pop-up shops. But the, but then the idea, the real idea of a pop-up shop is for uh, small businesses who want to make the move into the high street or the town centre but don't know if they can afford to tie themselves down to three, six, ten-year rental agreements or pay the rent. Um, so a pop-up shop um, exists to allow a small business to try it out and then they get the option to um, to stay on if they if it, if, it, if it works. Like with Churchland Gallery, when I set that up four years ago, February four years ago, um, it was just for one month. <coughs> and then I extended it to three months and I extended it to six months. And, and it's, I, I mean, I, I've, I've not had anything to do with it for years now, but it's still running as an artist's cooperative four years later. Um, so that's like the perfect example of a pop-up shop. Um, it's not kind of a, supposed to be like a glorified craft market, really, where you, you, you go in, rent a shop for three minutes and then uh, clear off again. I think it is for the whole of Oxfordshire, Sue. So I, I think, um, you know, I think I think it's important um, to give small businesses a try because, as I say, I've, you know, with 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 the leaky roof business, I've I've always got my eye cast on other properties, and and in Banbury, for example, you can't get a shop for less than eight to nine hundred pounds a month rent, and that's not for a massive space. Um, and then when you when you look slightly slightly larger, it goes to fourteen thousand pounds a year. Then it jumps to twenty four thousand um, pounds, and then like the old Moss Bros shop on the high street that's been empty for seven years, something like that. That rent is sixty thousand pounds a year. So before you even turn the lights on in that building, you're shelling out sixty grand. The rates are probably about fourteen thousand. Then you've got all your bills. And also, because it's been empty for so long, it's going to take a lot of money to, to get it how you want your business to look. So that's why it's been empty, because it's too small for a big company to want, but it's too expensive for a small company to want to try. And, like, like if I wanted to, that would be a perfect building for me. There's two massive rooms and a massive kitchen space upstairs. So perfect for a classroom and an office and space for full day classes to have the catering for massive sh ground floor shop but the rent alone is more than my business takes a year so how how does a small business and this is what um i think there's a lot of people having to look at now in in many towns and and cities and and governmental is is how how affordable is it for a small business to um to expand and upsize because there's always a lot of um a lot of support for brand new businesses there is very little until um this pandemic there's very little support for existing businesses um in terms of grants and things um so i i you know it's it's really hard to know how a business can can grow in 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 a town center because it you know and then you've got your business rates most places you don't pay any business rates if you're a small company and it's your first shop and your only shop um, and it's a certain size. If you get a second shop, then you start paying business rates, or if it's over a certain size, then you pay rates. Also, in our town, you've got the business improvement levy, um, which is a, uh, an annual payment, uh, which is made up of 1.5% of what your business rates would be, whether you do or don't pay. Um, so for some shops, it might be £100 a year. For some larger shops, it might be two, three, four, five. Six hundred pounds a year for the business improvement scheme, and that's legal. It's the same legal requirement as your council tax and your business rates. Um, so that all of these add-on fees before you've got utilities make it really difficult for businesses to to try and grow in in a decent way. 
Right, it has gone out of focus for a second just because I've moved the camera back. Oh, look at that beautiful eye. Oh, Barry, you're good at this, aren't you? Um, anybody would think it was my job. Although, I was saying to the class last night, I have ruined three paintings this weekend. Um, uh, a total of 22 hours work down the pan. I ruined them because I was using some canvas panels and I wanted to give them um, a nice, they're round panels and I wanted to make it look ceramic. So I used a special top coat um, water-based resin, <clears throat> but I didn't pour enough on to start with and I moved it around with the brush and didn't realise that there were areas of um, non, because I often use, I just use spray varnish the rest of the time which is fine with anything, but I'd got a few areas of pen work that wasn't, um, it was pigmented ink, but it wasn't permanent drying. So as the resin moved with the brush, it smudged all of the, it smudged all of the um, ink work. And, and, um, and I couldn't get it off, because if I tried to get it off, I'd smudge even more. And, I've waited till it was dry, and if I tried to peel it off, it actually take, it's bonded with the surface of the painting. So, thankfully, I've took photographs of them so I can make prints um, instead. I'm just going to have to keep the originals, and I really love them. Um, but never mind, it is the way it is. You're right with the market, Liz. Um, that's how it used to work with real life. You'd, you'd, you'd have a market stall at £30 a day, which is actually quite cheap. Uh, including your insurance and your rent and then you'd go for a pop-up and then you'd get a real shop and that's exactly what happened to the kids first um shop you know the, the children's clothing shop that was in church lane she was a market stall then she went for a pop-up then she stayed on for a, a four-year lease or something like that so it works really well i'm going to go with my embossing tool now So with with the embossing note with the with the embossing nose with the embossing tool I am doing the hairs of the hair um and I'm going in the direction so if you think again if you think of the face as a clock face the nose is where the hands are in the center and then sort of like as you go up the nose with shorter fur it's um upwards and then as you come round to the eye it goes right and then round as you know as a clock you can do his ears and stuff though I, if, if his mouth isn't right show me on your show me on your video Show me what you got, Rosemary. Going around his ears. I've got a delivery due today and I've just seen a van turn up, so it might be that. Ah, oh, right, okay. That's a beautiful eye. Yeah, his, his bottom jaw just needs to be a little bit bigger. But it's looking nice. Yeah, a little bit thicker, his bottom jaw. Oh, I could hear me then. Oh, somebody on my Facebook sh shared... Um, oh, what's his name, that comedian that talks about butter and parsnips? The young guy from Birmingham, Joe... Oh, I can't remember his name, but he's from Birmingham. But he doesn't have a, an accent. And um, giant Joe Lysett, that's it. And he was talking about, um, I think he was on Graham Norton. And Graham Norton said, but you're from Birmingham. You don't have a Birmingham accent. He said, no, but you want to go to the black country. He said, their accent there is amazing. Um, and they're just insane. Um, he said, I had to go on a driving course there uh, for speed awareness. And he said uh, there was a lady there and uh, 
the doctor that the, the guy said uh, running the course he said so obviously if when when are there examples that you would need to speed and the lady says oh well if you're taking your mate to the hospital you'd need to go fast wouldn't you and he went well no you can't really do that because you might hit somebody else and she said well that'd be all right because i was going that way anyway <laughs> if he needed the hospital i'm going on I'm, I'm 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 on my way there so i could give him a lift um <laughs> kind of missing the point but uh yeah it's it's uh, how the black country mind works so there is a lot of um hair on the hair it is rosemary it is have faith yeah, I, I think the, the embossing thing is, is kind of important, um, but it's one of those things you, you just have to believe in the process that it's going to work because um, you can't always see, like, you can't really see. Oh, you can see some of my embossing. Oh, that's good. So for the hair on his head, the coarse hair, I'm sort of going a little... I'm still trying to follow the right direction, but I'm sort of going a little bit more flicky and random so it feels wiry. That's the word I'm after. Yeah, um, it's, it's an interesting... Um, image really because the the hair is a is a is a beigey brown isn't it if this was watercolor we'd do it in a lot of yellow ochres wouldn't we and burnt siennas um but uh oh hang on i might have to charge my phone in a minute it's jumped from 16 percent to one percent in about two seconds um so it may go in a sec um so if i disappear that'll be that'll be why so i'm going to go and charge my phone up and i'll be back with discord in a few minutes so you'll have to switch to uh, Facebook sound and Discord for a while um, yeah. right. Let me get let me get back to my embossing. Whatever we do next week, you're going to have your hairy ears. Oh yes, do you know what? Snap Sue. I haven't put a piece of paper underneath it. What are we doing next Wednesday? There's still life of books with hair. <laughs> let me <laughs> Right, let's put that on. I'm gonna really crack on now. So I if if we can get all the embossing done by cup of tea time. Um, we've got these embossing tools on order. They're out of stock everywhere. Um, there are some available from China, but they don't look as good. So I'll wait for these to come in stock. I'm going to do his whiskers in this embossing. Oh, I went to a black country then. I'm sorry. It's because I was doing the black country accent, wasn't I, before? I'm going to do his whiskers. Um... as well. So don't forget, the more you build up, the better it will look. And yes, I know it's um, frustrating because you can't really see. If I can get the light right, you can just about catch a few bits of mine. Um, you can leave a bit more spaces on the more wild areas of the, f the hair to make it feel a little bit more coarse yeah i've not got discord set up on my computer so um i can't even have uh have chats with you on this computer i've got it if i was at the shop i've got discord on that i'll have to set it up on here i can't remember what my login is That's me doing the hair um, whiskers. 
the choo 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 sound. Yes, okay. Because while I'm putting the... Actually, I've got a teapot with tea in it still. I'll probably have to bung that in the microwave. Well, not the teapot, because it's metal. I'm going to have to ask Jackie very nicely if she'll crochet me a tea cosy. A nice vintage style one. I won't ask for Fair Isle because that's really hard to make, Fair Isle. And uh, she'd say no anyway. I live on tea at the moment, that's... Uh... I mean, I used to drink a lot of tea anyway, but uh, since I've been stuck at home, I just make a pot of tea and go through it. Uh, have about three or four cups. Even if it's stewed, I'll just bang it in the microwave and sho shove a bit extra sweetener in, because I like a strong tea anyway, as you know. Um, and then uh, reheat it in the microwave if I have to. And then I'll make another cup, uh, another pot. And that's basic. Oh, I will, Rosemary, I will tell you. Um, I'll try and uh, get it to to give me enough so we can do the uh, another bit i will let you know um those of you that have netflix and enjoy arty things there's a really lovely american series called blown away and it's it's like so it's like the pottery throwdown and the art challenges you know where you get a challenge every week um but what it's about it's about glass blowing and there's um, every week, like in the Bake Off, you start with eight or nine people and they get challenges how to do in blown glass. And uh, every week one gets voted off by the judges. Um, and it's a different challenge every week, very much like the Pottery Throne. And you'll get like, so today you've got to make a decanter and glass. Uh, and the sommelier, sommelier is, um, is the judge this week. And they're going to be looking for this, this and this. Or they always tell you what they're looking for. So it's called Blown Away. There's a few series. I've watched a whole series of one now. Absolutely love it. The the things they do, um, and the the first series that I watched do is there were several artists who'd been glass artists that have been working for decades in glass. And obviously, I live, I grew up in in Stourbridge, which is the home of glass. Um, even Tiffany glass was uh, created by uh, uh, workers from Starbridge factories that moved over to New York to work for Tiffany because we were the skillest, skillful, most skillful uh, glass artists in the world. From Starbridge made the glass for Titanic and all of that kind of thing. Um, and uh, it's, it's just fascinating what they do with their old techniques, new techniques. Um, and so they're all in this massive factory with all of these big furnaces and they have students from a college to help them, uh, you know, to sort of work out how to do it. I, it's absolutely fantastic. So if you like the Pottery Throwdown and Bake Off and all of that, Blown Away on Netflix. And I've got loads, because I've been watching that, I've still got all the Pottery Throwdown to watch. And I'm weeks behind on um, Landscape Artist of the Year. So as I'm coming down the body, I'm doing more ticks and flicks. And I want to make it as random as possible. I have got paper in between. You see, I've got a row of dots down here. No idea where that's come from. So that the hairs on the body are slightly longer, more wiry and coarse. So you've got some that are going to sort of cross over each other a little bit, maybe.
if you, I mean, have you seen Blown Away yet or not? It's um, Ah, and... If you're after a film again, I I only have Netflix. I don't have I, I've got I've got Sky, but I only have the cheap version. Um, it's called The Dig, and Ralph Fiennes is uh, the main character in it, and it's set in the late thirties, early forties. It's it's before World War Two starts, and it's all about the Anglo-Saxon Hall. Do you remember that the Sutton Who one? It's not totally accurate it is a film adaptation of the story so you can imagine there are huge chunks that aren't real um but it's, it gives you a vague idea about it and it's called the dig um i'm i mean a, a lot of sort of archaeology groups and and all of that kind of stuff on on facebook because i like old stones and that kind of thing and th a few of them are sort of like really not happy about it not being perfectly represented as fact but it is a film it's not a documentary um and it's it's a story but uh, ralph finds is brilliant in it what did you think liz it's good isn't it 1939 thank you diana um because they talk about the onset of the war um as well don't they in the film but i just loved it i think it's 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 the kind of era that i love anyway um really lovely Oh, I think that might be my delivery. I've just seen a man in an orange jacket walk past the dining room window. Let me go and check. <laughs> right, as it's three o'clock, um, it is a lovely film, isn't it, Christine? Really nice. If you want to make yourself a drink now, I think I've done all the embossing I can do without going emboss crazy. I'm trying to make it just a little bit more random. Put it away, Barry. There we go. So I'm going to get myself a drink, try and find out what uh, what we're looking at. Yeah, I know what you mean about the, uh, the timeline of it. Um, didn't see as much of the treasure as I wanted either, but um, lovely the way they enacted it all. And I did feel sorry for him being snubbed by the uh, the big archaeological associations because he wasn't a professional. Um, but yeah, lovely film. Just a nice glowy type oh, kind of film. See, I I picked this up again. I'm gonna I'm gonna just walk out in a minute, so uh, I can't keep fiddling with my embosser. And I need to make a cup of tea. Quickly. Right, it's down. Cups up. There's my bake. I've got my baked bean cup today. What the hell did I order?
my delivery isn't very exciting. It's something new to me. Um, my sleep has been all over the place lately because I found out, you see, I, a lot of my lamps in my house, including my bedroom lamp, are all on timers just in case I'm out or, or whatever because I work weird hours with the classes or give talks and that kind of stuff. Um, so all my, my lights are on timers. But the bedroom one is about seven years old and it broke and it's been coming on at random times. Uh, and I've not realised this, but it's been waking me up but partially. So I've not been getting good sleep for a week now. Um, so because I've got one of those devices that begin with an A and end in an Xer, um, I'm trying um, bulbs and timer plug sockets that you can sync with them. Um, to give that a go. So I've finally given in. Since I've got one of those devices, I might as well. I might as well make the most of it, haven't I? You know. I'm not happy about it being so technological. But you know what can we do? Right. I reckon five minutes more on my charger and I should have enough to be able to chat to you back on Discord again, but I'll, I'll keep you posted. So when you look at the background, the, the, the thing I can tell you, and it's the same with paintings, but more so with drawing because it's grayscale. Um, the important thing to remember is, is values and tone, isn't it? Um, and when you look at the background and the hair itself and you want to work out which bit's lighter which bit darker the best thing I can say to do is sort of like squint at it a little bit or relax your view and you'll find that the background although it's a dark greeny colour in places is still lighter than the main colour of the hair so the background is a light tone and then the hair is a little bit darker so I want to make um, a bit of background now do I try it with a brush or is that going to be too fiddly hmm I don't know what did this person do that I saw let me try and think they sort of put a load on there I just, I'm just experimenting and then put it on now that could well work I suppose but I think it works better with graphite better however if I'm using a brush on this the issue I'll find is that it's going to fill in my whiskers so I'm going to use my dirty smudgy stick I'll use this and I'll use my paper stump to give me a bit of a background If you notice, I'm doing it in a circular motion, and this is where I'll be annoyed at all of my fingerprints that are about to show up. But it does save signing my work, I suppose. So I'm going to use this bit of graphite on this scrap bit of paper. No idea what this row of dots is. So where I've got the hair and the whiskers and the fur, that's not where I want any graphite powder or pencil work to go because I, I really want to be able to see the lines. But it, equally, it means that I've got to go darker than this with the hair. And we've got an hour, well, just under an hour. So this is, I think this is a 9B um, graphite stick or something like that. But because we're putting a coloured background in, or a toned background because it's not colour, is it? It's grey. Um, it is an argument for the fact that you don't necessarily need an eraser because... Where have I just put that? Um, because um, you're toning 
the background in. So if you've got a uh, some a few rogue lines, it shouldn't make a massive difference. And if you wanted to, you could use graphite powder and a cotton wool ball for the outer area. And it is a bit darker at the top, but that is very much up to you. How's daughter and baby doing, D? by the way? Well, it's not really a baby baby at the moment, is it? It's probably, with this lockdown, it's probably 26 and got kids of its own. So free demo on um, Saturday on pen techniques for buildings. And that's on the shop Facebook page. So because we're using a lot of embossing, I don't want to do tons of heavy pencil work. My, my pencils are all going to be on their side um, so they don't fill in the dimples. Because you don't want to spend all of this time embossing and then find actually you end up covering it up. Now, if you wanted a bit more of a murky or a, an interesting uh, background. Two months. Time's just flying by, isn't it? You can... Um, oh, I'll give them all my love, won't you, Dee? Ellie, isn't it? I'm just sort of dabbing with the eraser. Just gives a, a different pattern breaks up the line work that I've been swirling around, softens areas, something like that. There are darker whiskers that you can do later as well. Right, now let me... Um, let me try my phone again, my phone... Well, we're a happy little arty community here, aren't we? I've just caught up with some former students that they thought they'd escaped me and they've moved miles and miles away, like Blackpool and Shrewsbury. But I can still track them down to ask how they're doing. Right, I'm back on Discord. Yes. Bum, 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 bum. I'm back on Discord now, Rosemary. It's back on to 36%, so that should give me another 40 minutes. So I should be all right now. So if you wanted to hear my dulcet black country tones, you can log back on to Discord now. Right, now I'm going to use the paper stump for the beigey creamy patterns around his eyes who's that that's just joined you rosemary is that you hello um all i'm doing is i'm using the smudgy stick to do the more beigey areas of his face so you know the the creamy bits around his eyes and on the bridge of his nose kind of thing and on his whatever his mouth cheeks are. Frozen. Let it go. What am I doing? What am I doing on the frozen screen? Ooh, how exciting.
Sometimes it does that. When when I watch uh, when I watch my screen back live just to check, it'll go from the last point I watched it at to um, and then within seconds I'm back into what I was just that second discussing. So it's quite interesting. Yeah, well, it's technology, and it wouldn't be technology if it weren't annoying. When I was at school, we only had the one, and then in primary school, and all the teachers used to try to avoid using it as much as possible. Um, and then at secondary school, I grew up, because my parents were very... We, we had a Commodore 64 for my brother when he was a teenager, and he was like 16, 17 in the 80s which was quite a, a, a fancy thing to have and we only played games on it we didn't know what else to do there was no internet or anything was there and then when i went to high school i grew up with a fear of computers and i i failed my it lessons because i just didn't want to touch the computers i i hated them with a passion right i've just got to plug my uh plug my laptop in now hang on a sec oh it's all going with it plug this in Click that, switch this. I was hoping it would have lasted, the battery would have lasted, but it didn't last. So yeah, I've just hated technology all my life. And then when I when I started working in primary ed, um, there were no, well, there was the computers and stuff um, for, for planning and, and all of that kind of thing. And then... I, I was just uh, an artist in residence uh, at the main school, several hours a week, and uh, we were using whiteboards, you know, proper whiteboards, old fashioned, you know, the, the next one up from the blackboard. For my old, for, for my traditional art lessons. And then the following week, the, the swines at the school didn't tell me that they'd upgraded. So within the week when I turned up to teach art, all the the whiteboards had gone, and, it, and then it all became smart board. And I was like, I will never succumb. Um, I'll never use smart boards to teach an art lesson. Um, uh, within three months, I was actually train. I, I was running training lessons for the staff on how to use it. I I I just loved it. And then I. Um, well, I've I've just smudged a bit over his face, and then I'm going to go five B. And um, pencil on its side. I'm I'm buffering, am I? Hang on, let me have a look. Um, I think it must be you. Let me have a quick let me have a quick watch on my laptop on my phone. Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, I'm watching me live. You'll hear me talk about me in a second. Let me have a quick, me have a quick watch. Yeah, so there we go. It must be you letting me buffer. You're buffering me, Liz. So, uh, slightly darker. I'm doing around the eyes first, just because I think it gives a, a better... As I said, with the eyes, it always makes me feel better if I can do the eyes. Get that lovely texture of his face showing through. I'm back, hello. How's Churchill the hair coming, Liz? We will eat them with the carrots. I'll never forget that time I, I, I photoshopped Churchill's face on your little baby chicken, Liz. Because you said it looked like Churchill. I found it on my phone the other day. It really made me chuckle. So 
a pencil on its side. Vary the pressure. How's it looking now, Rosemary? Yes. Well, I've got battery. Show me, show me, show me. Oh, he's looking lovely. Yes. Good. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I think it, it it will take a while for it to to sort of work how you want it to. But I think that's the thing though, and and that's what I do love about drawing. You know, like I was saying, I the one the paintings that I ruined and. It was my own fault because it's a brand new thing that I've never used before. And instead of trying one and trying the one that um, I liked the least, I did my favourite one. And I did all three together. Um, cause I thought, oh, well, I'm doing it. I might as well do them all. Because you just think you know better than things that you've never done before. And uh, so it was my absolutely my own fault. Um, so I won't be writing letters of complaint to the company. Um, because it's it's down to me, sadly. But it doesn't make it any less annoying. Yeah. See, I've got a lovely... I've got a commission that I've just finished, and normally I use spray varnish, and then part of me was thinking, oh, maybe I'll use this new resin coat oh you see i knew we were called the, the philtrum but i didn't think it would be the same in the animal kingdom of uh, janet so you're saying it's a cleft okay thank you for that extra did you ask liz because she'd know wouldn't she um janet's liz not not you liz <laughs> she's a vet they're after, interesting, they're after extras for All Creatures Great and Small, the new series. But you can't have a beard. Um, I'm using the 5B, um, so I'm not shaving my beard off just so I can be on the telly. Even though the main character's got a beard, but I suppose if you're an extra, you have to sort of be a bit more blendinable, don't you? And because I'm ginger with a beard, I think I wouldn't be blendinable. Well, he's got a bit. Mr. Mr. What's his face has got a beard, hasn't he? I mean, that's why people were saying I look like him. Mr. What was his name? The main, the, the main guy that runs the, the vet. Not, no, not Harry. The other one, Fair, Far, 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 Fair, Sig, Sigmund, Far, Farnaby. Was it Farnaby? No. Oh, I can't remember. I don't know. Mrs. Riley will know. Oh, I love the new. He does look like me. He's um, Prunella Scales and what's his face? Farnan, thank you. Uh, I knew you'd know Liz. Um, he's Prunella Scales and Timothy West's son. Siegfried, thank you, everybody. Look at you. You're like you're like Google, you lot. Ask a question and you're all there. Probably, yeah. You're better than Wikipedia. Some of it's quite useful on there, but I have to, like, 
cross-check everything at least eight times if it's on Wikipedia just to make sure. Um, but what I'm fi what I find really interesting when when I'm lecturing art history, I need to sort of like be as accurate as I can. So I'll find it on Wikipedia, and then I go, oh, sounds a bit sounds a bit ropey. I'll go and check it. So the painting is on, say, the National Gallery. So I'll find the painting on the National Gallery and it'll go, there's the write-up. And then underneath it'll go, source from Wikipedia. And I think, oh, for goodness sake. Exactly. They should have their own. The, Wikipedia should be sourced, sourced from the information of the National Gallery or the Tate or what have you. They can. I've thought about setting up a project, a page for me, just to make me sound more important than I am. Um, you know. Yes. Yeah, see, I haven't got an account with them, but I thought, oh, maybe I should have one, or at least for my Bo Norton one to make me sound like I'm a celebrity. Because Tom Carradine's got one, and if he's got one, I want one. <laughs> Although, he's on, um, I asked my um, Alexa device, I can't say it out loud, because in case you've all got one, and then she'll start going off on one. Um, I asked my device um, to play some music yesterday, and I thought, oh, I'll see if she's got Tom Carradine. So I got her to play Tom Carradine. And he's on, he's on Amazon Music, which is wonderful. So I was listening on Amazon Music to Tom Carradine's Cockney Singalongs, um, one of his albums. And I had a whale of a time. It wasn't while I was doing my cheesy dancing. That's, that was a different day. I got 4,000 steps doing my cheesy dancing. Well, I've had to, Rosemary, because I'm I'm very sedentary. Because I'm I'm feel I'm, well, I'm fat, but I'm feeling flat at the moment. I just feel so. Ugh, I don't want to do anything, and I'll what what will happen? I have so much I want to do, but I'll finish this class at four, and then I'll 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 go from sitting in this seat to go and sitting in another seat. And, and then I'll moan about it and then come bedtime I'll be so annoyed with myself because I haven't done anything that I'd achieve, wanted to achieve today. And, and I just think, oh, for goodness sake, Barry, you've really got to get on it tomorrow. You've really got to do something. You can't fit in your trousers. They haven't been able to be done up since October. You've really got to do something about it. So on Sunday, and now my back's slightly better. It's, it's twinging a little bit today because I'm kind of overdoing it. But... Um, I thought, you know, I can't do a lot of moving and lifting and exercise, but I can move my feet. So why don't I find the most cheesiest music I can think of? And thank you for those of you that uh, suggested some songs for me. Um, and uh, it was wonderful. So, yeah, nearly 4,000 steps I got for nearly an hour of, of doing cheesy dancing, which is brilliant. And I felt happy and excited and I'm listening to rekindling some songs. Sorry, Rosemary, what was that? Mm. Yes. Yeah, easy done. Absolutely easy done. This says it's lockdown lethargy, and I think I think you're right. I, and, and I know we all feel like it, and because I I'm always on the go, and I was lockdown one, I was on it like a car bonnet. I was, you know, I had a lot to change. I had to redo all of the classes, and I had to work out an online shop. Done all that now. Uh, lockdown two in November. Well, we were still, I was still at the shop every day because we'd got so many online orders. And um, and it was only for, what, f four weeks, wasn't it? Something like that. This lockdown, 
I'm just so bleh. Don't ask me to spell that. But uh, can't be bothered. Yeah. I know. Yeah. No, I think everybody's going to have a certain amount of um, apprehension about everything getting back to normal. I mean, I think it'll be a year or two more before we're fully, fully back to normal. Just because of um, how rampant it is over here. You know, I've seen other countries that are, are slightly slightly more normal again and they're doing more normal things but they've still got to be careful i think japan is still on a they've extended their national emergency for another month so uh sort of it, it is it is going to be a bit weird you know just being near people is going to feel weird and I, i've had a few occasions where i've been outside and i've been near somebody within within a meter or within a meter and a half and it just feels really weird and I don't, I don't like it. I, but I don't want to become, you know, anti-people. Because I know I could be like that. Because I used to be, I know, I, you know, I had a time with my anxiety in my 20s where I didn't leave the house. I was petrified to leave the house. Um, only for about s nearly a year until I forced myself. Um, I was all right if I was out with... Well, Mum wasn't living with it, with me, so I had to go and pick mum up. So that forced me. I think she did it on purpose, having to run errands and things, just to get me out of the house. Um, so this is still the 5B pencil, by the way. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I was... During the first lockdown, I was having loads of panic attacks. Um, I couldn't leave the gate. I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere, for goodness sake. There's like six houses in my street. Um, so I could have gone for lovely walks and rambles, but I was just really scared of everything. And then the a week in, I was getting more scared. And then I thought, you know, I can't, I can't live like this because I'd rather just be out. I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm fine. The chances of me meeting somebody is slim enough as it is so i should go for walks so i did start leaving the house and because i haven't got a garden leaving the leaving the grounds if you like just to go down the lane and up the hill and i didn't meet anybody so i started doing that more often but it was nicer weather wasn't it during the first lockdown yeah but you see i've not I've not done anything. So that's when the cheesy dancing started because I thought I'll just um, try it. And when I saw how many steps I'd done and I was getting um, a lot more fluids because I was thirsty. So I was drinking more on Sunday. So I thought, yes, I think if I could try and do half an hour of cheesy dancing every day, that's at least 4,000 steps in one sitting if you like that i know i can do um and i i don't i don't think you i i think it's you that's muted chris i can't unmute you i don't have that power i i can mute you um look i can mute you but you're not on mute it's you that's on mute No, he's still on mute. Oh, hello. Yes, you're there. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh.
No, I don't see how that, because I, do, I don't... You're back. Well, yeah, because I was looking on the screen and I thought, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to press any buttons on this thing, to be honest, Chris. I ain't got a clue. So I knew it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> it was you. It must have been you when you... When, I don't know when muting server. I don't know what muting the server means because we haven't got Nick at the moment. Um, so I, I I don't know what any of it means. Yeah, he'd he'd have known what to do. Because I'd have thought it would just have um, muted everybody for for yeah. So yeah, or something. I don't I don't know how it works. No, weird. Yeah, it does. We've yeah, we found out now that it does. You have I know. Don't use use your power responsibly, Rosemary. How's your hair going, Chris? I bet you're finished, haven't you? <laughs> How about you, Anne? Good, because I am as well. I'm behind Chris. We're all behind Chris. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm going to switch up to sort of like a 7B. So you can see it's sort of um it's sort of well I might use like a, a 9B just for the darks under the chin and, and whatever, but I am gonna sharpen it. Because this is this is the 9B that I broke, if you remember, and it's shattered, so um it's already a lot shorter than um the other pencils. Oh Jan Janet's asking, has anybody lost weight during lockdown? Oh yes, Aunt Janet, Anne, Anne, Anne and Chris Anne. She says she has. Are you doing lots of exercise, Anne? You see, I, I, I wonder. With me, it's the snacking. That's that's. Because I've got more time on my hands, because, you know, the shop isn't there. So even if I was at the shop, it's just that, that's what caused my IBS problems, is all the sugary and the, the wheaty snacks that I was eating. Um, because it's quieter, I'm not running up and down stairs serving customers, and I'm not, you know, doing this and doing that. So I've got more time on my hands, and what I'm finding is I'm wanting to munch on stuff. I've I've got rice cakes now, and that's what I'm eating all the time, um, just to stop me from wanting. Well, it doesn't stop me from wanting because it doesn't taste the same as biscuits, does it? Rice cakes, um, and if I wanted to put um, chocolate spread on it, then it, it defeats the object of eating a rice cake. So, yeah, I'm I've really struggling, and and snacks are the the thing for me. Yes, that's true. Yeah. But you know, I think I think that's the Yes.
Yeah. Well, that's good though, I suppose, isn't it? Oh, I see this is a really broken lead. That's annoying. I'll have to use a... Oh, Norman's dog has gained two kilos and she's on a strict diet. Bet Betsy Boo. Betsy. Oh, yeah. She's a cockapoo, isn't she, Betsy Boo, Norman? I think that's the trouble, though. I, 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 I do think it is a... like, And we've all got that sort of fatigue, haven't we, where we just can't be bothered, really, now... And that doesn't help you motivate yourself. Because I, if, if I think about being at work, you know, there's a lot of shop. There's a lot of stairs in the shop. Um, and I was always up and down serving customers. And I was, you know, doing loads of stuff. And then going to Great Bolton, that's up a flight of stairs, isn't it? To go to the village hall and down. And I was walking around the classroom there. Um, and, and then when all of that stops, you, you really don't realise how much exercise you don't do. Um, because I haven't got a pet to take for a walk. Because I suppose that helps you, doesn't it, Chris? Taking um, Harry out. But the weather was better, wasn't it, Anne? So, um, I I think I I was free. I I'd got a little stepper that I got from the charity shop for a five. You know, like just a little portable fits under the settee, just as the paddle thing. Um, and I I I was doing that. I'd got music on and it, I was in the garden and um, I was exercising and doing everything like that. However, I broke it. I broke the main crossbar and I can't fix it because it, 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 it won't work. Um, so I couldn't I couldn't use that. So I, that's why I thought if I do cheesy dancing, it will um, it will help me a little bit. Any music, on, yeah. So I mean, it was quite nice. I'd got, I'd got music on from all the eras, and um, I was really enjoying myself, to be quite honest. <laughs> I said one of my friends uh, on on Facebook said, "I'll only recommend a song if we can see a video of you doing it," and I went, "My back isn't well enough yet," um, but I, what I might do. Is I said when my back is better because on my normal, my personal Facebook you can still do live streams. So I said I might do a live stream for us all to do some cheesy dancing together, um, to to get moving and keep fit. Although my friend, you know Carrie Ann, who sang at my show, the 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 one with the red hair, she does. She's a, a keep fit instructor and she does club a size, um, up in in the West Midlands. So they normally you, you you will go there with your glow sticks, and you you do keep fit to clubbing songs from the nineties, um, and she's doing a free one I think on Wednesday this week as a trial because um it's a sort of the club size is a is a sort of uh, franchise thing, and uh, so they can't they can't do it online normally, but when the village halls and 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 stuff are shut then. Then she can. So she's doing a, a Zoom one. So if you feel like doing clubbing exercise, uh, and you've got if you've got glow sticks to hand, then Carrie Ann will be the one to. Oh, have you? Is that online? Oh, excellent. I'm having to use a graphite stick because I've my pencil won't work because it's um something like that I think I'm I'm enjoying doing this little hair. I suppose he's not that little. Are you pleased with yours, Chris? Right, a little bit there, a little 
bit there. Yeah, that's what I'm finding. I think I need to go... I, I'm looking at the picture and I need to emphasise the... Under his chin. Actually, this graphite stick's quite nice for making the, the coarse fur. Coarse. Yeah, adds a bit of texture, doesn't it, the graphite stick? See, I've not got into the whole Joe Wicks thing, um, Janet. Too energetic. Yeah. But you know, this this is it exactly. I know what I should be doing, and I know, like, I know I shouldn't be snacking, but. With this lockdown, I just almost don't care. I just feel so flat and brrrr that I just don't, I don't want to. Um, and then I hate myself because I know I should have. And I think that's, that's, that's the harder part. Yeah. Well, it's this, it's the lack of routine, isn't it? Because I used to be up at half past six every morning because I had to, you know, shower and do the long drive to work and sit in loads of traffic and that kind of stuff. And even when I'm having to go into work, I don't need to be there until 10 o'clock because I teach all the classes from home. So as long as I'm at work to do the stuff I need to get done at work, I've not really got a set time. And um, that's what I'm finding hard is the sort of lack of routine. I think I'm going to have to start making myself get up early again as if I was going to the shop, which I was doing during the first lockdown. I kept my routine exactly the same and it really, really helped with my mental health and, and everything. And then this time, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, need to darken down here a little bit, I think. Oh, that's better. Because that there's a crease in his ear on the hour right that runs sort of like down down his head and then behind his jaw pouch thing. So that's... Yeah, but I'm going to sort of... Yeah, he's got. He's yeah. He has got more of a rounded head, I think, um, at the top. He's got a narrower head and a wider jaw, hasn't he? Let's bring that round. It is, it is kind of a square, yeah. I've, I've curved it a little bit. You're done, are you, D? D's done. I don't think I can do much more, to be honest. I'll try and maybe do some darker tufts. Mm. 
this coat. So this is a 7B I'm working on now because I can't use my 9 because it keeps breaking. I'll have to nick one from the shop on Friday. But I think a simple background works really well for this. Otherwise, it'd be, it would it would distract too much. I think um, you'd start to lose the the hair, which happens to me anyway. Yeah, I think go a bit go a bit darker. Yeah, I think it will when the shading goes on, yes. I think so. Yeah. 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 I'll have to get you and Anne to work out how to put it on your on the, the Discord screen, Chris. Yeah, I, let me have a look. On um, if if you look at um, a, a, your screen, there's one that will have. Um, because what are you watching Discord on, Chris? It's on your iPad, right? So if you um, go on the the bit that says Wednesday afternoon. And so tap on that, so it brings up a little drop up. Um, and it says um, three names. Then right at the bottom, you've got a video camera, um, a microphone, a speaker, and the hanging up signal. So, ah, right. I will have a look and see if... Um, right, that might be... Right, so what I'll have to do is, I think Nick must have set some up and I've set some up and I don't know what I'm doing. So, but I can I can do that for you. Um, I'll check you've got video permission ready for Friday. Uh, so what you do is, um, is then you press that and it will come onto your webcam. And then you can hold it up and show. Because um, it is useful just to check you're going in the right direction and... Because you, you use it every week, don't you, Rosemary, in different classes? Yes. Yeah, I'll make sure that your settings... I'll try and get Discord onto the laptop here so I've got a bit more control and I can um, I can do it for you. Yeah, I will. I'll do it for all of the lessons. Um, and, then, and then it will really help. Uh, I thought it was a standard setting, so if you're saying that it says on yours that it's you've not got permission, then that must mean that I have to give permission. So I will, um, yeah, so I'll, um, I'll have a look and see what I can do this afternoon. Well, I think, I think that's one of the benefits of Discord, isn't it? Is, is that we have got more of an open link um, in real time than the Facebook group, so um, I think I think it'll be good. So I will definitely try that. Um, yes, D, we should have them separately. Um, I hope so. I will. I can double check, but I won't know until Friday. But um, I will have a look. I'll mention it to Jackie, and hopefully the two of us will remember. I think you know what I think. I think I am done with uh, little hair, Hartley. Little Hartley, the hair. I've enjoyed doing him. I've enjoyed it. So next week, what we got next week is 
a still life of books, but not the same sort of still life. It's it's books, but they're not. It's not the same books as we've done before. So coming coming up this week, tomorrow morning is boxing hairs in pencil. Tomorrow afternoon is a stone water fountain. It's kind of quite a nice artsy picture in in ambers and and peaches, and the water fountains half on half off with a a nice Roman sort of scene of pillars and things behind, all very subtle and lovely. You'll need a gel pen probably for that, or masking fluid. Uh, Friday afternoon, we're doing frosty, misty fields and amber skies. That's really hard to say, frosty, misty fields. Frosty, misty fields and amber skies on Friday afternoon in watercolour. Saturday morning is a demonstration, and that is pen techniques for buildings. Monday morning is a demonstration, and it's an illuminated phone box in the snow in watercolour. Monday evening is doing the uh, water fountain in watercolour. Tuesday afternoon is a sleeping dog, and it is just their head and paws. It's not the whole dog on a cushion in acrylics. Tuesday evening is a drawing class, and it's a barn owl in flight. And then that takes us to Wednesday afternoon, which is the uh, still life of books. So not nice um, practices in angles and all that kind of thing. So I don't think I can do any more to my hair. Maybe I should darken his eye a little bit. It seems a little bit too pale. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that's good. Just a little hint there. Do you know what? I've got too much um, smoothness around the eye where it meets the fur around the eye. I think I need to just break it up a little bit. It looks like he has actually got mascara on, whereas in real life he won't have because they don't have boots or super drug in the animal kingdom I wouldn't have thought so he can't get his mascara maybe there's an Avon maybe there's a squirrel with an Avon account I don't know but anyway generally they wouldn't wear mascara right that's me done I think yeah good thank you Janet I'm glad you enjoyed it um, if you find that the animal is not coming forward um, you, you can either use the putty eraser to soften the background or use your 7 or 9b just to darken the hair in front of the uh, background so play around with the, uh, the the contrast but yeah I think that's all right I'll take a photograph of that and I'll uh, I'll pop it in the uh, in the pictures underneath it, it, I think my hair is a slightly different shape to the other one I think he should have his nose further to the left um, his nostril bits I think the whole this whole section should sort of like come out a little bit but I can't really change that at this point but I'm I'm fairly happy so thank you so much everybody for your company good you haven't not Winston today maybe Macmillan well it's it's a movement in the right direction shouldn't it really um so thanks ever so much, everybody, and I'm, I'm glad my phone has lasted enough to get uh, Discord twice, and I will look at uh, Discord on the laptop and see if I can uh, change you so we can get a video for you, Alan and Chris, so you can I can see what you're up to then. Um, but only, only when you let me. I won't spy on you all the time. I promise. No. Well, let's... Uh... Oh, yes. Oh, it's like being like on a quiz show when you know the answer's right and you're shouting at it and you know they can't hear you. Oh. At least now we know what the answer is. So if I've... Once I've got, lap once I've got laptop power of Discord, I can probably do that anyway as well so we can sort it all out anyway thank you so much for your company um there's the four o'clock bongs um so uh take care have a really wonderful week i know i'll probably see some of you um 
over the next uh, few days or maybe on the Saturday demo on the shop page um, or even if you want to draw boxing hairs tomorrow um, you can join me in the morning at 10 o'clock so thanks ever so much take care have a wonderful week what's left of it we're halfway through and uh, I hope to see you all very soon so bye bye everybody bye bye thank you